error. I gotta check you before you wreck yourself. Turn your Bible to the book of Luke chapter 4. Give God praise for the praise team that come down. Amen. Prepare for the final word of 2014. Yes, sir. I need to hear one verse, uh -huh. two verses, if I won't complain while you're standing looking for the text. The book of Luke chapter 4, verse number 17. But what goes on around us, I won't complain. Love had some good days. It's my life story. I've had some hills to climb. Yes, okay. I've had some weary days. Some weary days, man. Some weary days. And some sleepless nights. And some sleepless nights, well done. But when I Isaiah 
what do you know about Jesus? The reason God sent his son Jesus to die for us is found in Luke chapter 4. The reason why Jesus sacrificed his life for us is found in Luke chapter 4. The reason Jesus left heaven is found in Luke chapter 4. The reason the Holy Spirit without measure came on Jesus so he could accomplish his assignment is found in Luke chapter 4. But watch this church. The more I know about Jesus, the more I learn about myself. See, watch this. Watch this. According to John chapter 17, verse 22, look what Jesus' desire is. Jesus is having a conversation with God about you and I. And this is what Jesus says in John 17 and 22. What do you know about Jesus? You know Jesus about? says, I have given them, them are believers. I have given them the glory. Uh, does your life look like glory? Jesus, I have given them the glory. Jesus, I have given them the glory. Therefore, your life should look like the glory. Not the sadness, not the madness, not the depression, not the sickness, not the brokenness. Jesus says, I have given them the glory. Yes. Yes. I don't care what label you put on me. I don't care how you devalue me. I don't care what you say about me. When I woke up this morning, I woke up understanding. I woke up realizing that Jesus says, I have given them the glory. Uh, Jesus says, God, the glory you gave me, I now have given to them. That they may be one as we are one. See, what Jesus was doing here, he was transferring the glory to the believer. Jesus desires for us to get off the bench, off the pew, yes, off the no. chair, and get involved in the game. He says, the reason I gave you the glory is not for you to sit in church. The reason I gave you the glory was not for you to sing and dance and shout. The reason I gave you the glory so you can do what I have come to do. Jesus says, like in a trap meeting, I passed the baton off to you. I'm giving you the glory. Now do something with the glory. Yes, yes, the church has been occupied by talkers and not doers. Wow. Oh help up. Help up. But before Jesus ever gave a sermon, he had some action. Faith without work is yeah. dead. And the church community has been filled with too many folks declaring faith but not doing faith. Yeah. Jesus says, I gave you the glory. Yeah. We become, we become too comfortable. Uh -huh. 
We become too comfortable in the church instead of being the church. We're satisfied that numerically our church is growing. But I'm not satisfied until our church is doing. If you really want to make an impact on this generation, stop settling for being and start doing. Don't tell me you are a Christian. Do what Christians do. Sh show me some Christ likeness. But the problem, many of us only know Jesus at a surface level. So we only operate and function at a shadow surface level. We, we never trust him to launch into the deep. Everything we do in the name of Jesus, the reality of it is, and I don't want to hurt your feelings, but the reality of it is, most of the stuff you're saying, you're doing in the name of Jesus, you could have done in your own name. You don't need Jesus for a house or a car, you need credit. You don't need Jesus for a degree, you just need to study. So most of the stuff you say, I'm trusting God, but no, you're just being lazy and don't want to do the work, so you put the responsibility back on heaven. But I'm telling you, God did not call you and anoint you to be. He called you and anoint you to do. Stop being lazy. What do you know about about Jesus? God. Let's look at seven things about Jesus we should know and imitate. So if you're going to copy anybody, copy Jesus. And the Luke chapter 4 and Isaiah chapter 61, it tells me the mission and the vision, the assignment of Jesus. So if I'm to be Christ-like, you do know that's what a Christian is, right? To be Christ-like. So how am I Christ-like, but there's nothing like him that's like me? If everything I do does not look like what he did, I'm really not Christ-like. Oh, say a word. The Bible says, Jesus came to minister to the poor. So if I'm Christ-like, I have responsibility not to ignore the poor, but to minister to the poor so they'll be poor no more. Yeah, that's right. I like that. This don't, this don't affect me. 19.6 million Americans live in poverty. 19.6. 33.3% of those who live in poverty are black. 28.8% are Hispanic. You do the math. 62% of people who live in poverty are either black or brown. That's why I keep shouting, black lives and brown lives matter. Because whenever you find something broken in America, you don't have to look far to see who's leading the way. Either black folks or brown folks. This great United States of America that we live in has the second highest child poverty level in the entire developed world. We say we the place, the United States of America, yet we're second in child poverty, which means our children are being raised in poverty. Yet there's a church on every corner. But poverty still exists. Somewhere we stop doing Jesus sized ministry. We're so busy getting our shout on and our praise on, but when are we going to get our assignment on? I'm sick and tired of motivated pep rallies, but no victories on the field. When's the last time you really saved somebody? talking about you convince somebody to transfer from their church to your church. I'm talking about when you really saved somebody. When you found somebody that was down and out. When you found somebody that was slimy and grimy and you showed them the love of God and you loved them enough where they made their mind up. Let me try to guard you, sir. See, money, watch this, money is not the problem. Because there is not a lack of money. 
America does not have a money problem. America has a lack of money management problem. But too few hands are managing the money. Most of the wealth are being handled by 3% of America. The church is not a place for handouts. The place should be a place for hand-ups. In the church, you should be learning how to master your money and not let money master you. You can't feed the poor. You can't bless the poor. You can't assist the poor if you are amongst the poor. Noses saying, Pray for me. I want some folks, I want to raise a generation of believers that when a person is sincere and they're going through something, we won't just pray, but we'll be able to pray and pay. That's the church that Jesus called into existence, not to have a bunch of prayer meetings, but to have a bunch of doing meetings. I want folks to break out in disputes. Now, Pastor, I got this one. Now, I got this one. I want folks to be fighting over who going to bail the next person out of a financial jam. If you really want a high cap, high cap on that. We save this person and we save that person. You fight over nickels and dimes when God calls us to be financial giants. says, you will have the poor with you always. No, 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 no. So some folks say, well, see, Pastor, you can't end poverty. And Jesus says, it's going to always be with you. I don't look at it like that. I look at it as Jesus giving me a challenge. Okay. Uh -huh. You accept the ice bucket challenge. Yes. But when you accept the get rid of poverty challenge. Yes. Wow. Jesus, 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 Jesus. See, I the checker. What I look at that as Jesus saying is, I'm challenging you, church, to be about outreach, uh -huh. right. to assist and coach people through. Come on, See, the key is through. through. We should have enough anointing Come on, man. that when somebody is going through a financial jam, yeah. there should be enough anointing in the house for to teach them and coach them out of their situation. Come on, and I can boldly stand the fact it starts with the time. The tithe is simply a decision. When I make a decision to tithe, I'm making a sound decision. And the problem with poverty is most folks who are in poverty long term, you can trace it back to poor decision making. And the church, instead of educating them, has only tried to get them to shout. I don't want to shout a dollar out of you. I want to educate a dollar out of you. I don't want to get you stimulated and motivated during the giving period where you're giving without knowing why you're giving, where you're giving out of emotions and you get home and your life's off, but you just gave an offering and you got your praise on. But I want to educate you and coach you that when you give, it connects you to heaven. And when you give, it connects you to the resources. And when you give, it connects you to the plan of God. And when you connect it to God, Plan, you operate in the overflow and abundance. I made my mind up. We will not be a church in the pit of a government. But we shall be the light of the world. Yes. We shall be known as the place. When you go to grow mm. yes. to reach your full potential. Oh, you God. might come in poor, but you won't die poor. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, somebody should have been Hallelujah. shouting right there. I don't care how much generational poverty you came up in. I don't care about your generational dysfunction. There is a word in this house to set you free. You may have been born in poverty. You may be operating in poverty. But when you get under the anointing, you shall be poor no more. We have a responsibility. My question is, how long?
alone when you make poor decisions. Mm. Help, Lord. All right. And then throw your pity party. Come on. No. Me, Lord. Yeah. Oh. What you what you doing about Jesus? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody mad at me right now. Daddy, you talking about that. Yeah. It's the last seven years. Won't he make a shout? Come on. Help us. Help us. Help, 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 help us. Help us. Why he didn't play for real song? Because yeah. I don't want you having an artificial happiness. That's right. That's good. I want you looking happy. Uh -huh. I want you being happy. Yeah. Joy, joy, joy. Because Jesus said, not only did I come to the midst of the poor, but, but I came to give sight to the blind. Sight to the blind. Without vision, people perish. Right. The blind can't see. Jesus came to give us sight and vision. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus came so we can come out the dark. Yes, no. Watch, watch no. this. Watch this. America, we are blind. We can watch Eric Garner get choked out and Michael Brown and George Baker get shot down and we keep talking about getting turned up. Yep. We blind. America, we stand in line for overpriced yards and Black Friday sales. Come on. But won't stand it out a few minutes to vote. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. America, we're blind. Oh, yeah. When they shut down our schools and lock up our children, and we don't notice because we're too busy shutting down the club. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're blind. Oh, yeah. We're blind when we check our Facebook post on a regular, but never check our bank account post. <laughs> we blind. Because blind folks can't see. We're blind when, when injustice reigns and we're not concerned. We're blind when our boys are being hooked up and locked up and messed up and our daughters have no candidate to marry. We're blind when we're having church as usual. When the world is going to hell, we're blind. We're blind when a deacon is afraid to tell Little Johnny, raise your pants up We're blind We're blind when a church woman Is competing with the street woman We're blind My God Knowledge And education Gives you your sight back because the Bible says in all you're getting, get an understanding. Now don't get it twisted. I, I love to get my shout on. But when I come back down to earth, I want to be able to have something to shout about. Jesus says, I've come to give sight to the blind. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. So we should be helping people come out of the darkness. Jesus says that I have come to minister to the afflicted, number three. Yes, Lord. To the afflicted. The afflicted are those who are distressed with mental or bodily pain. Mm. Afflicted are those whose body has been invaded by sickness. Yes, there are diseases that will infiltrate the body and cause you to be classified medically as afflicted. Yeah, yeah. We've seen cancer afflict the body. Yes. We've seen ALS afflict the body. Mm -hmm. We've seen arthritis afflict the body. We've seen disease and sickness afflict the body. But when I've come to change, Jesus, I have come to minister to the afflicted. So, so what does that mean to me? That means when Jesus says in Mark 16 and 17, when he gives me a direct command, not a suggestion, but a command in Mark 16, 17, when I read the Bible, I believe the Bible. The Bible is my final authority. It's not just a good book. It's not just something I pick up on Sunday. But when the Bible says in Mark 16, 17, lay your hands on the sick and they shall get well. I believe that there's 
have enough anointed in my body that when I lay my hands on the sick, they shall get well. Because that's what Jesus did. And if Jesus told God, let's give them the glory, who is them? Those who believe in my name. Those who believe in my power. Those who submit to my authority. So if you are a believer, Jesus says, I have given you the glory to lay hands on the sick and they shall get well. I appreciate it when you call me to come pray for you. I appreciate it when you admire the fact that I show up at the hospital. But what I want to do is grow up a generation of believers that even before the preacher get there, even before the intercessors get there, you got enough faith in your own hands to lay hands on your own mama, to lay hands on your own daddy. If you get sick and you can't get the preacher, you lay hands on your own self. Jesus says, I have transferred the glory. I've given you the glory. Do you believe in your hands? You got the power and the authority to lay your hands on the sick and they shall get well. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Bless you. Small church mindset. People get mad when the pastor don't personally show up. But in the kingdom mindset, the pastor get mad when you don't pray for yourself. Because I'm not a good teacher if I've been around you this long and you don't know you got power in your five fingers. You got power in the palm of your hand. If you are a believer, the Bible says, who shall lay hands? The believer. Who shall they lay hands on? The sick. So if you happen to be a believer that gets sick, before you call me, lay hands on yourself, and let's touch and agree that you're already here. Mary didn't need Elizabeth to confirm she was pregnant. When Elizabeth, when John leaped in Elizabeth's spirit, the spirit of Elizabeth was and agreeing with the spirit of Mary. It's time we start touching and agreeing that you are already healed. I dare you to lay hands on yourself right now. I dare you to grab your purse, your wallet, your credit card, your checkbook, and lay your hands on it. You are healed in the name of Jesus. You the sickest you will ever be. You the brokenest you will ever be. You the saddest you will ever be. This way you look right now in the 2014, you won't look like this in the 2000. I declare right now, you're real. Come on, man of God. You preach it to me this morning. My account will be affected no more. My marriage will be affected no more. My children will be affected no more. My education will be affected no more. My thoughts will be affected no more. My body will be affected no more. Anybody 
here. No, you shall overcome. They try to oppress you because the oppressed people end up being a depressed people. And when you're depressed, you have no joy. And when you have no joy, you have no energy. And when you have no energy, you have no meaning. Now you're stuck in a plantation of sadness. Now you're stuck on the plantation of madness. But I come to tell you, you need the spirit, not the spirit of Toby, but you need the spirit of Kunda. You can chop off my legs, but I'm a hop out of here. You can chop off my hands, and I'm open my mouth. You can try all you want to, to oppress me, but I know no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No matter what you throw at me, shake it off. Hope for tomorrow. 